95% of the time, it's relatively simple to work out what you should be doing. If you are investing on your own and your income by 2020 is going to be at £50,000 or less, then you should definitely be buying in your own name. If you're investing as a couple and as a couple, your income is going to be £100,000 or less, again, you want to be investing in your own name. Now, as you buy more and more properties, that pushes your income threshold up. Let's say the average rent is 600 a month, okay? And the average costs that you have with that property, the lettings agent, the maintenance, and the in insurance, excuse me. So that might add up to about 170 a month. That means that property is going to be about 430 a month added to your income balance. You can offset some mortgage costs, but we'll come to that later. So that means each property you get adds about another £5,000 per year to your income. So if your income is £30,000 employed income or self-employed income, your properties, the first four at £5,000 a year would be £20,000, would get you up to £50,000. If in a couple, one of you is earning £50,000 a year and one of you is not earning at all, then you could probably buy 10 before you reached this income threshold. Okay. So you buy in your own name until you reach the threshold. Now, at that point, you can either continue buying in your own name, and if you're only ever going to buy another couple, you'll probably still buy those in your own name. But if you've still got eight left to buy as part of your plan, then you'd go to the second phase, which I'm going to cover shortly. Okay, so remember, this isn't accountant's advice. I don't know your exact personal tax situation, but it's a general principle that 95% of the time holds true. Okay, now, if you're over that threshold, so that's over 50,000 of income personally, and the reason it's set at 50,000, by the way, is the government has said categorically by 2020, 2021, we'll be at 50,000 where the 40% tax threshold kicks in. They're moving that up and up to that level. So if you're going to be over 50,000 as an individual, or over 100,000 as a couple, and the average property is the Insight Group buys for you a 5,000 pound per property adding on that income, but you're going to be over, then 95% of the time, it's best to be in a limited company and to set yourself up in a limited company structure. Literally these days, cost £12 online to set up a limited company. It's very easy with a bank like Lloyd's, for example, to set up a limited company bank account, and you're up and running. Now, what are the caveats? What are the things that are different? Well, there's so many scenarios, I can't cover every single caveat. But what falls in that 5%? Well, the thing that I want you to understand, if you build a portfolio in your own name, the real benefit of that is that when it comes to releasing, refinancing and releasing money, the money that gets released is tax free, as you will know. But when it gets released into your bank account, if it's in your own name, it goes into your bank account. However, if you have a limited company, it's still tax free to release it, but you're releasing the money into the limited company. That money belongs to the limited company. So now the limited company has that money. Now, when you're in growth phase and growing your portfolio, no problem whatsoever. OK, but when you get 10, 15 years, five years, whatever your plan is down the line and you're wanting to release that money and live off it, if you're releasing it within the limited company, it isn't in your bank account for you to spend and go on holiday or live off. It belongs to the limited company. Now, what does that mean? Well, you can only take money out of a limited company as dividends if you've made a profit. So the rental profit you make, you know, if you've got 10 properties by then and they're making you £20,000 a year, that rental profit you'll pay tax on at reduced corporation tax levels, which is great. And then you can take a tax efficient dividend to take that money out. But the releases aren't profit. So you can't take a dividend to take that money out because it's a release. It's money that's sat in the limited company. Okay. You can use it to pay salaries. So if your income is going to drop in 5, 10 or 15 years below that 40% threshold, if you're retiring and your income's going to drop right down, then you may pay yourself a salary from your limited company with those releases. Okay? You will dividend from that limited company, you will dividend to yourself the rental profit when that income has dropped. So if you're wanting to take these releases in the future and use them in a tax efficient way, and that's only five or 10 years away, but then you're planning to live for another 30 years, 
you may take the tax hit in the initial five or ten years while you grow the portfolio and still do it in your own name knowing that your income in the future will be virtually zero or write down and then having those properties in your name is tax efficient for the remaining 30 years of your investment. So that's the caveat where I might not use a limited company. However, most people I speak to who have got a great income say, do you know what? I'm probably going to work for another 20 years or 30 years or if I've got other investments as well. So my income is going to be or, or my pension. I've got my pension as well as my property. So my income is going to be near that 40 percent taxpayer threshold anyway, even when I retire. Well, then it is more tax efficient to be having your portfolio probably in the limited company. So so that's the only kind of gray area where if your income is in 5, 10, 15 years when you finish the investment and you're just living off the releases and you're, if your income by then will have dropped right back down, you may ignore the limited company for now, being more tax efficient and still do it in your own name, take the hit for the next 5, 10, 15 years, but then you get the benefit of it with those releases later. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. For 95% of you, that will help you work out what to do, whether it's in your own name or whether it's in limited company. Hi guys, it's Aaron here. Did you enjoy this week's video? If so, there are three things you can do to continue your property investing journey. The first is you can click here and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really hope you do because then each week I can keep sending you great educational videos just like this one so you can keep developing your property knowledge. Secondly, you can click the link here and get a free copy of my book the Property Coach, where I teach the nine steps to really truly successfully building a property portfolio. The third thing you can do is click here and go to my website www.aaroncurry.co.uk and there you can subscribe for free to my newsletter. And what that means is you'll get loads of free educational content in lots of different forms and also any of our promotions or offers that we run are also there on the website and also in those e-newsletters. Again, helping you move forward with your property investing journey. So if you want to take action, just click any of these three boxes or all three and move forward to the next level. And in the meantime, invest with knowledge, invest with confidence, create financial freedom. Thank you.